going on, everybody? This is the UGA Sports Call and Show. I'm your host, Paul Meharry, joined by my co host, Jason Butt, Ben Choppy Bachman, and of course, a special guest here, Dane, the uh, Fade Young. If you're watching from the podcast, Dane got a little fade on his hair, man. I was a little jealous, uh, not going to lie. But I had to, you know what? I cut my own hair. So this this is my work. Wow. Well, it looks looks halfway halfway decent. Thank you. Yeah. I've been doing that for a few years because, you know, as you approach your, uh, approach your mid 30s, I think you just like try to find ways of I can do that better than paying someone to do it. And no, then, you know, no, and nobody can do this like my man Bruno can at Unique Cuts over in Buford. Uh, Let me get a look at that. Yeah, you want to see it? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, still got it styled up from a wedding. Left the wedding early tonight so we could uh, Is that be a one on the together. sides. That's a, that's skin, brother. That's skin. Yeah, but it goes into a one at least. Yeah, fades into yeah. a one. Yeah, mm. yeah. T- two is as low as I'm willing to go down to doing it myself. Damn. Yeah. You guys have uh, numbers on your cuts. Mm-hmm. I just trim it. <laughs> we can tell, bud. We can tell. <laughs> Anyways, oh, guys, I just got fresh out the shower today. This is the shower look. <laughs> Thanks so much Please. for joining us, guys. We're gonna talk about <laughs> Andrew Paul. What that means. Oh, go ahead, Jason. You had something funny you're gonna say. No, I was laughing. I thought that was a funny joke. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, we're going to talk about Andrew Paul, what it means for the Georgia running back room. Kendall Milton's hurt. Uh, is he going to be back? We'll talk about that running back room because it does seem to be a little bit uh, shaky, I guess you could say right now. But uh, if you're a dog fan, I think you can you can hold out on that. We will also touch base on kind of the SEC in general, where the dogs stand. We are one week away from our preview show for uh, UGA Oregon next Sunday, we'll be able to talk about actual real life college football that's happened the Saturday before. So for everybody, Mary, I know you're watching last week. You got upset with us because we were talking about too much preseason talk next week, Mary, we will be talking about the dogs. And as always guys, if you're watching, we want to know where you're watching us from, put it in the comments section on YouTube or Facebook, and we will shout you out on the show. Donna Lewis is already coming in talking about the time is moving as slowly as being a kid on Christmas Eve waiting for Santa. So much talk, predictions, etc. I can't wait for September 3rd. We can't either, Donna. Uh, and I can think of one person that would might want to wait for a little bit until September 3rd. That's Del McGee, Dane Young, because the news that came out today. What happened with that? It sucks with Andrew Paul, man. Like, dude was having a good camp. Freshman coming in, running back at Georgia, have a shot to play, and then um... – you know, heard that he he limped off a little bit of the scrimmage yesterday, and turns out that's a torn ACL, which obviously, I think at this stage, that's, he's out for the season, unless it's like one of the super miraculous things of trying to come back. And But Georgia won't need that, right? Maybe it's different if it's Kenny McIntosh and you see if you need him in the playoff or something. But, like, he's going to miss this season. Sucks for Georgia. Um, sucks for him personally because I think he's done everything right up to this point to have himself ready. And, uh, you know, the first thing I start doing – as someone that covers the team is doing the iterations of my head. All right. So Kenny McIntosh has been good. That's great. Kendall Milton, a little banged up uh, and has a bit of a history with that, but nothing too crazy. Uh, and then you're down to Dejan Edwards and Branson Robinson. And then it's walk-ons behind that. And I've covered enough Georgia, Jason. I think you were really all of us that like saw the Georgia team that had Gurley, Marshall, uh, Chubb, Michelle, and then Brendan Douglas had to start in the middle of the season. So yeah. it, it, it's Ooh. a crazy sport. And you can get five deep and need that fifth running back. And the good news for Georgia is they are pretty deep at running back. If you're going to have a, a catastrophic injury at this stage, uh, you know, the preseason, or, you know, right before, you know, it's uh, when, when you, you don't like it for the kid. I don't, I'm not trying to make light of it, but, you know, if, if you are going to, this is, this is going to happen. Um, you still got your top returning starters who should be available for week one. Obviously you talked about Kendall Milton and his situation, you also got Branson Robinson and Dejan Edwards. Uh, I mean, I think both those guys can kind of kind of fill fill the the bills up between the tackles. Guy Kenny McIntosh looks to be your uh, your third down back outside of you know, pass catching guy who can also do a lot of that dirty work between the tackles. So I think situationally they're still fine. Um, you hate it for the depth. You hate it because we we actually were hearing that he was standing. Um, something about the number three. I don't know what it is. Uh, running backs wearing uh-huh. three, getting hurt early in their careers. But I uh, hate it for Andrew Paul. Hopefully he's able to recover and you know be back to 100% for next season. Ben, how does this affect the dogs in that uh, running back room with Del McGee? 
Well, my early prediction before the year was that Branson was going to be a top three back. Now it's looking like more and more likely it has to be that way because Kendall Milton has had injury problems. I mean, I think both years in his career, he's missed at least like four weeks at a time before. So he's had injury issues. I think he's banged up right now. Then you lose Andrew Paul, who was having a great camp. I mean, they said he was one of the best. He he was competing with Kenny McIntosh up there for best showing in fall. And it's like you lose it. Now, I think the one thing I've noticed with Del McGee is he always likes a running back, kind of thunder and lightning, a guy who could catch the ball in the backfield, be very elusive, and then a big back. Well, now, if Kendall Milton's struggling with health and you have no Andrew Paul, it's Kenny McIntosh is going to be one of those backs. I think they're going to need Branson Robinson. And that guy – who looked 80 times bigger than our 34-year-old record intern, Paul, at a rivals camp, is now we're going to get to see that he's going to get to see the field very early, which I think is going to be interesting. But I think they're one injury away from having a huge problem. But I think when you have three, I mean, I don't think Kendall's really a long-term thing, but as of now, you have four scholarship backs. And I believe, uh, I know Clark's his last name. I don't know how to pronounce his first name. Savion Clark, Savion. Savion Clark Savion. is... I think he's a decent walk on running back and he's going to be your fifth option. So I don't think it's all doom and gloom yet, but long-term, this is not a good look for obviously a running back who is very promising coming in as a freshman. You never want to see that happen. Jason, you've been one to really touch and harp on uh, freshman running backs, being able to come in early as long as they can pass protect. It's it's the one position where you can really see these guys kind of come in and shine. Now you've lost Andrew Paul who, again, he was having a good showing by, like Ben said, and, and all things uh, fall camp related. Now you look at it, you go look at Kendall Milton's last two years, true junior, played in seven games in 2020, eight games in 2021, has a career total of 91 attempts for 457 yards and one touchdown. And this is supposed to be your top guy, but he's not there. It's That running back room is just starting to look a little – Week and it's something we haven't mm. talked about in a really we haven't talked about that in a really long time ever since Kirby's been here ever since Dell's been here there it hasn't looked like this going into a season but everybody's so hyped up on the offense being able to be so good but at the same time this running back room is looking to be the worst it's been since Kirby's taken over right I mean I mean when when it comes to who's returning and what's unproven yeah but. I think I'll just go back to if Branson Robinson's the real deal, like we all expect him to be. I mean, that, again, like if, if the offensive line has no issues and if Branson Robinson is decisive, cuts quick, uh, and has the instincts uh, to, to play the position at this level, they'll be fine. Because, the, again, that's one of the positions where somebody can step in and be effective and uh, and be that uh, – and then be able to churn out yards and, and make plays. I, I don't – there's not as much of a learning curve at running back, it's so much more instinctive, so much more about uh, just having that kind of, uh, for for lack of a better term, that God given ability. Um, you know, it's it's just not as uh, it, it's not as difficult. It's just not a, the learning curve, as I mentioned. It's just not there. So I, I think Branson Robinson's that guy that a lot of people expect him to be. I, I just don't see it being uh, right now. I don't see the the concern. I think you have a pretty good running back in Kenny McIntosh. He stays healthy. They've got their third down guy. They've got somebody who can also – he can play every down, but he's also your pass catcher. Um, and then uh, I mean, Dejan Edwards, I, I'm really interested in how this this really works out for him because for somebody who it seemed like – I think a week ago we were talking about how he might be fifth string again. And now it looks like he – if, if Kendall Whoa. Milton, for instance, if Kendall Milton uh, ends up uh, not ready to start the season or, or – has to work his way back in, or or if he gets banged up, I mean, Dejan Edwards is right there in that three man, that top three where they should be rotating rotating him into that to that group. So I'm really interested to see how it works out for him, maybe more than anybody else. I've been saying the last couple of weeks, I think Branson Robinson at some point will be uh, the number one running back in this backfield in terms of just like first down. If it's a run situation, you know you're giving it to him. Um, that prediction seems to. <laughs> maybe be looking even better at this point. Um, you know, unfortunately, in that situation. 
if you're looking for a silver lining, because I like to go down the roster and find the funny names. That's why I have my annual Lad McConkey Awards, because when I saw him in recruiting a couple of years ago, I said, I'm going to do an annual awards named after Lad McConkey of the funniest names in recruiting every year. And I only put it on my Twitter. It's not a big deal. But there is a name, another walk on that Georgia fans need to know. And because I have producing powers, I am going to pull him up on the screen. And that is number 32 in your program's number one in your heart, Cash Jones. <laughs> and if you see his face, it's even more funny because I really, 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 really want Georgia to have a whatever 45 point lead at Vandy with a thin running back room and Cash Jones come in to lock it down. That, that looks would like, make me very happy. That looks like Ben's little brother. <laughs> Paul. Ben. I was going to call you Paul Mahomey, but no, you're Paul my asshole. <laughs> Look at your little brother, Cash school. Jones. Uh, but we got Wait, Mailman and Cash. Uh, well, Mailman uh, wouldn't be handing off the cash. I mean, that would be probably Brock territory, maybe even Gunner territory. No, probably Muschamp. What's his first name? Jackson Muschamp. Nah, you won't get yeah. past Gunner in, in the rotation there. No. We got a question well, here. Cool- Shannon oh, Shannon. yeah, yeah, that's right. They says, do uh, says, do you think McIntosh will be a return guy this year due to the running back injuries? Kyrus has an ankle injury too, so who do you think will be the return guy? Don Blaylock and Ladd, question mark? Well, first off, I can tell you McIntosh will most – I mean, I don't want to say without a shadow of a doubt, but I don't think you put McIntosh back there to return anything uh, with mm-hmm. the way that your running back room is looking right now, especially with the uncertainty of Kendall Milton, what that entails. They did it with Gurley. I mean, it wasn't Kirby, but I mean, Gurley returned I think kicks. Lad might return kicks. I could see yeah. that. I think it's open. Yeah, but, I, I, I know you said that. I know you said, but yeah. it was not with Kirby. Does Kirby let that happen? I know Kirby likes playing the five stars on punt return, and that's you know that's what he harps on most of the time is being able you know, to. I drop five stars on on our special teams, Dane. So that's how we know that you know they can play. But you know, historically, you're starting running back. Historically, a kick returner has been like a wide receiver, or sometimes even like a defensive back. Kirby doesn't throw his defensive mm-hmm. backs in that spot, which you know that's it, it's always a skill guy on offense. And so, if it's not going to be running backs, and you're just looking at receivers at that point, and so you know, who do you feel good about doing that? I think McConkey's up there. I think Karis Jackson and punt because he's done that a lot before. Like if you're just asking to go to a fair catch, Karis Jackson can do that. Um, is I'm, afraid an of, guy? I'm, I'm afraid of Don Blaylock being that return guy just because so kind of not – this is such a bad word to use because he's not. He's a grown man playing football, but kind of fragile. You know, you, mm. you don't want to put him back there. You want to have him for certain situations and that not be it. Uh, it's, it's put a, my boy Cash Jones back there. Put there Cash back there. Let's make it happen. There you go. In fact, Rhett Womack over here says he remembers seeing Cash flat footed jump on the back of a Ford F one fifty and flip flops. Kid is really special. <laughs> that's that, that's <laughs> let's go. Let's oh, go. Yeah. That's exactly how I would imagine. I mean, wasn't Kiers hurt last year and they used him on punt and kick return? I, I think it might be for sure. Tom, then. Yeah. Paul, I think I think Kirby's gonna see this and be like that Paul Meharry guy, that guy's a bum. I'm gonna go opposite uh, what he says. Georgia goes, doesn't with, work like Texas, where reporters say a starting quarterback and then Sark yeah. says like, the other guy. Yeah, I do want to. I do want to touch on that because I saw is, that because it was like Twitter wild. was like, "Oh, Hudson Card's a starter next day." Coach announces Quinn Ewers starting quarterback. Like, oh, damn! I'm not buying of, Twitter ever again. Well, <laughs> from what I've read, not to change the script completely, but we'll we might as well. From what I've read on this, and I've it's very curious uh, subject for me. So I've kind of dove into it a little deeper. Is that everybody on the Texas program? For everybody that's wondering what we're talking about, it's Texas naming a starting quarterback. Uh, everybody around the Texas program thought it was going to be Hudson Card. It had got leaked out, I think, that the coaches were going with Hudson Card instead of Quinn Ewers, who, as you all know, went to Ohio State, forgot or went through his la- for what is it, forgone, forgo, his senior for, year. For, yeah, he forgo, forgo, forgone. Uh, wow. wow, yeah, he Did decided he to he decided to forgo his senior yes. year of high school. There we go. Thank you, Jason. Editor, for went. <laughs> can can we go for went? Yeah, he's a genius. Yeah. He's a genius go. to me. Quinn Ewers is an icon. Are you telling me you skipped a year of high school and you made like a million dollars off of Ohio State and then you just dip? He's a genius. 
I don't, I don't, if he's a bust, I don't care. He's a genius. He could be the greatest smarter, bust ever. Who's smarter, him or Miles Brennan, to get his NIL deals and be like, nah, I'm Ooh, good. That's good. Yeah. He's uh, just retired. Probably, yeah, probably yours because he's still got some talent left in him. He can still probably maybe produce. Miles um, Brennan is also from a very wealthy family in Louisiana, so his NIL deals were a drop in the bucket, I think. Not that I'm trying so, to do well, like so yours, snooping at other people's bank account. Yours is younger. So it's like this guy as a high schooler thought, damn, I'm going to skip high school, get a million dollars at this school that I don't even care about, and then leave to go to my dream school in Texas. He's a genius. And he waited. He knew the coach was probably coaching change everything. Happened. Sark head coach. I mean, he's a genius. Here's the thing, though, Ben. Here's the thing. Now it's got Texas in a bit of a whirlwind, if you will, because Texas coaches thought Hudson Carter was the guy. And then randomly, the SID sends out that – the next day. Queen Which is Ewers. weird. SIDs Very don't weird. usually send out who the starter is. I've never, never seen that. Ne- I've never. Have you ever seen that, Jason? You've been around a long time. So um, it's, it's just randomly sent out on a Tuesday afternoon. Nah, I, mean, I, starter. I mean, like, under Kirk, Kirby never would do that. And then I remember, like, even when it was the Rick's final year and it was Grayson Lambert, Bryce Ramsey, Faton Bauda had worked his way out of the competition by this point. Man, and what a – Jason, we just – to stop you for a second, if you're worried as a Georgia football fan, listen to those names that Jason just said. <laughs> back options back in the day when Mark Rick was here, 2015. Yeah, no, 2015. I was talking. I was talking about that the other day with with somebody about that that first oh, practice dear, where God. where uh, yeah, I remember like Fatone Bowden opened the first practice with the ones, and you're like, oh God, and then Bryce Ramsey, you, you okay, he's got you know. He's throwing the ball well. And then Grayson Lambert was just like skipping balls in the dirt. And you're just going like, oh, no, this this kid ain't starting. And then 21 or 25 days later, whatever it was, like Mark Rick, like to, to this point, we sit down in the media room and he just goes, okay, I'm about to tell you all some news. Grayson Lambert's a starter. And that's typically how I always envision these situations happening. Um, Kirby doesn't do that. Um, and Kirby definitely wouldn't have a SID put that out. So – Quick note on Sark, and we can get back to, to Georgia stuff. The best moment when I covered the Falcons, uh, Sark, uh, Kurt Warner was on NFL Network, and he tried. He, he was breaking down the. Uh, it was right after the, the Falcons played the Eagles, and uh, it was 2018. Falcons lost like 18 12. They had a chance. They, they had four downs in a row. I think they threw the ball four times from like the five yard line, couldn't score. Um, Kurt Warner goes on uh, NFL Network. He's like, Oh yeah, the Sark should have done this because of this defense. And it turns out, like Kurt Warner was wrong, or at least in Sark's mind, Kurt Warner's explanation was wrong. So I asked Sark that next media availability. Um, he plays it dumb. He's like, "What? What now? What exactly? What? What did he say?" And then I repeated it, and then he just goes, "Boom!" Like, "Oh no, we they were in this defense. This we had a call, blah blah blah." Coach Kurt Warner should stop. The whole time. Yeah, he's like, "Coach, Coach Kurt Warner should." It was something like, "Coach, we were just like." All right. Like he, he, I don't put this past Sark to like this whole thing is, is, was a plan, some sort of man, manipulated, maybe like find out, like, like plant some fake, fake it, uh, news or something. And then, and then come back and yours is always the guy. Like that, the, the Sark, Sark would do this sort of thing, is what I'm saying. Since well, we're jumping around, I will say my favorite part of Faton Bauta was trying to hear like <laughs> South Georgia <laughs> South Georgia weekly radio stations try to like learn how to pronounce his name because he kind of did come out of nowhere for Georgia. And there was a lot of Faton Bota and stuff like that. Uh, but I also just looked him up over here because I was, I was curious like what's happened since I mean I thought he was coaching and I know he ended up with Mike Bobo at Colorado State for a little while as an assistant. Yeah. Uh, and then he followed him to South Carolina as an assistant. He has not followed him back to Georgia as an assistant. And according to his LinkedIn, Fatone Bauta is now a property manager for Empress Property Group in New York City. So mm. that sounds like a uh, solid little life deal. So good job, Fatone. Huh. Good for not him. Bad. Can not we come stay? Bad. That's my question. Uh, <laughs> We're visiting. <laughs> to, to, to Wait, is he working or is he an intern? I mean, he's working. Oh, Why man. would you he's, assume he's, he's already answer? has more work experience than Paul? Damn, <laughs> Paul, you're a joke. Mm, man, that, uh, that was a rough little joke there, buddy. He, he, that was, set up was a long one. 
he yeah, he's playing the long game there. What's funny though is my business is on this pin right here, and then my my truck out front also has it wrapped. So, uh, anyways, um, <laughs> to about the Quinn Ewers story, what uh, business is that, Paul? Oh, Main State Construction Solutions. Go ahead. If you need anything in the state of Georgia, go ahead and give us a call. We do everything construction, remodeling, mitigation, roofing, the whole nine yards. Give us a oh, call. Oh, you're going to set up NIL deals for some of these kids now? Uh, no, it's, it's not worth it. They're just all going to have the hard hat on. It's, it's not worth it. Paul, I, no, Paul, I spent a, like, lot, of, uh, I, I spend a lot of time on the internet. If I wanted to find out more about – where, how would I find you? Oh, MainStateConstruction.net. Thank you. Also, thank you. Also said you could do uh, you got to find somebody like uh, the 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 Nebraska air conditioning company the with the, the coldest Buckner, the coldest. Crawford. Uh, yeah Crawford not Buckner the coldest then, Crawford uh, nil deal. Apparently with the coldest too it was uh, when he first came on the scene with recruiting we were jumping everywhere tonight guys I want to get to these questions Rhett, Rhett's got a good one over here uh, but when the coldest came on he said uh, when he first came on the recruiting scene everybody thought his middle name was to ever do it so it was the coldest. To ever do it, Crawford. Um, and people ran with that for a while. And it sucked me in. I think it got a lot of people. And I was like, dude, that's the coldest name to ever come out. Like the coldest. And then it was to ever do it. But I think that is false. It's just the coldest. Crawford. Um, but when he came out, like his Twitter was like the coldest to ever do it, Crawford. And we were like, if his first name's the coldest, I wouldn't put it past him to have to ever do yeah. it. It's his middle name, but it was not. If your name is Dakotas, like what are what's in the running for your children? Are you looking at like I C oh, or yeah, like because you I can't see. go Dakotas Junior. You can't be Dakotas and then have another even Dakotas. even colder. Yeah, <laughs> frigid ice hot. I don't know. It's frigid <laughs> ice age. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, back to Georgia football, guys. Uh, especially if you listen to us on the podcast, you probably think we've gone crazy. Uh, Rhett Womack, if Tyreek Smith plays the star, who's opposite him when he uh, when we get in the dime? Everett, Nyland, and does Dirty Dan hold off Malachi Starks from getting 50% of the reps mm. against Oregon? That's a, I like that second part of the question a whole lot more because we've been hearing more and more and more about Malachi Starks, especially uh, with him running with the ones. I, I definitely think you see him out there maybe uh, being like the money guy in the dime package. Uh, by the middle of the season, he's probably a starter. Who, okay, you guys can answer this question. Who gets the most snaps as a freshman against Oregon? The freshman? As a as freshman. A true freshman. True freshman. On defense or, or either side? You can pick wherever you want. You'd be kind of a oh, – maybe. Oh, I was gonna say you'd be kind of a fool to pick on offense, but maybe not. There's one guy you could. I mean, Branson. Well, we've mentioned him. Like, there's a no. I'm going Brett Thorson. I'm going Brett well, Thorson. Man, you can't win. Man, you're such a bum. <laughs> bum. He's right about Brett Thorson, though. Um, I mean, Dylan Bell. I, I, I'm just really? trying to think. I mean, yeah. Why not? I mean, who you got, Dane? Jalen Walker. Jalen Walker. Yeah. There's I'll just go he, Starks. I think Jalen Walker may start from day one. Dane's not delusional, Paul. He's not like you. I don't know why you're doing that reaction. I mean, start, starts is also up. a good option. I mean, I think he could. I, I like the 50-50. I think he and, he and Dan Jackson could easily well, split there. Paul, there's really there's three inside linebacker starters to me in this system. Like, Tyndall to me was a starter, even though he wasn't a starter, because he played so much and was so vital. So you're telling me Jalen Walker can't be one of the three? I don't think that's crazy at all. I would also say I would go with Starks just because the position's open and he's doing so well. So that's why I'd go with Starks. I would probably go with Starks too. I don't know about I don't know about I don't know about that, Dane. I don't know. I don't know. Jalen Walker. Well, I mean, that, would you, a big, that would be a huge surprise. You know my take on the my take on defensive backs. I mentioned this what, last week when I was on with y'all that like if there's someone that's going to lose their job, it's Tyke. Like I think he's going to start against Oregon, but. I don't think Tyke is that guy throughout the season. Like William Poole's up there too. Nobody's talking about William Poole. William Poole's probably going to play, I would assume. So yeah. no, nobody brought him up in the thing. I'm like, they might split time at Star. So I don't even know if Tyke's going to play as much like Dane just said. I really don't because William Poole's healthy. He played that way in the national championship game. It'd be hard to take him off the field with the experience. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to see. Hmm. Hmm. If Tyke gets less than half the defensive snaps – I'm going to be one upset man on the POS. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Fred F says, uh, what's the Why do you of- care? 
I don't know. I, it, it's just a personal type thing here, Jason. I just like Tyke Smith. Mm-hmm. I liked his highlight tape at West Virginia. I thought he was going to come in and be a stud for Georgia. He got hurt. Oh, Freddie Freeman is back. Fred F says, what's the meaning of Choppy's nickname for Ben? What is it, Ben? Oh, well, I think you started calling him because that was my username on the site. Now, my yeah, nickname. That's what, that's what he's getting at, yeah. Okay, so my brother this is actually the real story. Uh, I tell people, like, if I'm out at a bar or something, I'm like, why do they call you Chop? I'm like, because Chop is on top. I would like to say Are you old enough to drink? Like can that. you go to bars? But, oh, I, I can. I don't have the fake ID anymore that Paul and Trent were trying <laughs> to bring me on. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I did have a fake ID for Trenton, New Jersey, in the house of the foreclosure. Some guy took my ID. He's like, dude, he looked it up on his phone. He's like, I know this is bullshit. I just want to look this up. He's like, dude, you know your house is a foreclosure? Like, this is total bullshit. <laughs> that's, that's besides the point. So um, my brother <laughs> called me Choppy McChop Chop. I don't know why he called me that. So I said, you know what? I think it's a cool name. I'm going to shorten it to Chop. It's kind of sick. And then it kind of expanded Choppy. It's just a whole thing. Like, they call me Chipper. Any Anything with a C-H works but that's why i'm, I'm chop so what they call me so choppy so there choppy you go. make chop chop i did yes, a, my uh, brother called me. i don't know where the, I, I, I asked him the, actually recently how, how why'd you call me that like, he's like i don't know just sound how interesting. long did this nickname start man i was four what? so oh, like wow. do your parents call you choppy uh my mother's like the only one who calls me benjamin so no and i don't know i don't even talk to my my father too much though so. I don't even know what he calls me, to be honest. <laughs> do, do your friends call you Choppy? Yeah. Or will they just say Chop? So, you know what it One calls me of? Chipper McFarlane because we all make fun of Booger McFarlane's awful commentary. And they're like, oh, you're Chipper McFarlane and, and stuff like that. So, they, they call me all sorts of names. It's like I have like 20 different yeah. names. They'll say something. It's like, yep, yeah, that's me. When I was yeah. in local TV, you would end a broadcast with a kicker, just like a lighthearted thing, and you bring the little family shot together of the news and sports and weather people. And one of my favorite ones that we had was the story about some British robotic boats, and they named them Bodie McBoatface, and that's what yeah. that reminds me of. <laughs> Paul, I am uh, a pork chop person. That's true. That's my, but I love my grandmother cooking these pork chops. I can use that now. Thank you, k Dog. Uh, Shannon says uh, we could beat the Ducks running fourteen personnel the whole time. Don't even need a uh, don't even no receivers wide receiver wide receivers out there. Um, oh, hold on, we just got some money to the show. Super chat, oh, no. super chat. You guys can do that, by the way. Uh, oh, chop avius, chop avius, chop avius, Bach. I like it. <laughs> Call the show. Uh, That's all you need. Chop avius, Bachman, right there. Um, I will Hell. say about the comment about Georgia running 14 personnel, which I don't 100% disagree, but like Oregon's got some dudes on its defense. They and do. Justin I hope, Flo, I hope no Georgia cool. fans like take notice that those dudes in that scheme with those coaches, like maybe a little tougher to move the ball than you think. Like, I don't think this is going to go be some like 49 to seven blowout or anything. Like Noah Sewell is going to be a first round pick. He'd be a Justin starter Flo. at Georgia. Justin, I mean, they wanted Justin Flo bad. They wanted Noah Sewell bad. Georgia did. Uh, both linebackers. Noah Sewell really bad, yeah. Yeah, both linebackers. Uh, Georgia went after heavy. Is there a better uh, linebacker duo than that in college football, arguably? Right now, probably not, no. no. I still think linebackers in one-on-one coverage is just a mismatch to go against him. If you got the tight ends, I, I still think they're going to use that a lot. I mean, yeah, right. it'd be hard not to. Right now, no. The problem for – Oregon, though, is they've got, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, five starters on their defense that are underclassmen. That could be maybe an issue for them. But, I mean, looking at them, though, Justin Flo and Noah Sewell, those two two backers, man, you guys are really going to see why Kirby wanted them, uh, especially Noah Sewell, when Georgia plays against Oregon because they are going to be all over the field for Dan Lanning. I'm sure Dan Lanning, that was one big reason. I mean, obviously it was to be a head coach, right? But uh, he looks at that defense and he sees Noah Sewell and Justin Flo, two guys that he wanted at Georgia. And he's like, eh, I could have worse to start off. Like it's, it's like when you start a dynasty in NCAA 14, you look at the roster and you're like, Oh, I got two freshman linebackers. They can last me till I get a better job. It's so, kind of what Noah Sewell and Justin Flo are for, for landing. So They're last defense. season, the best team that Georgia played in terms of defense in the regular season was Clemson. What are the odds that for the second year in a row, the best 
defense that Georgia plays in the regular season is in the first game. Really? You th- is that a I'm, I'm asking, or... like, what are the odds of that? Who? I don't. Uh... I mean, are we getting Pac- to Auburn and Florida? Yeah, Pac-12. Oregon, like their defense will be better than Mississippi State's. Yes. That's not saying much, though. That's not, yeah. Right, but well, like, I, I'm mainly looking at Georgia's schedule and saying, where is a defense better than, than Oregon's? Dane, if you were on here when, season, when Jason was talking about Mississippi State, I mean, <laughs> Mississippi State's a D3 school in the bottom right screen look, here. Look, Oregon, look, Jason. I mean, they – what is Mike Leach? We can we go over this again if we want. What is he? Offense, have, air yeah. raid, no running, no defense. Second best quarterback in the conference, though. You and Paul can have that one. I don't he, know. He I, thinks Will Rogers is a better yeah. quarterback than Will Levis. What is Will Levis <laughs> doing throwing screen passes? I'm telling you, that game, they hear he sat in there with that Georgia defense. How many throws were so short? Like, did he make any big throws? Didn't like, Wanda Robertson have beating. Okay, he's tough. Like, I get that. But you can say that I, I don't get the hype off of that game. They didn't score 20 Well, no, no, goals. that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, Will Levis threw the ball to Wondell Smith, Wondell Robinson, like, what, 15 times, and he had less than 50 yards or something like that. You know, you know how they I didn't know throw the ball downfield. The, the numbers. You know how I know weird. you guys like Will Levis is because you bring him up every show. I don't. I don't. You say he's I, that guy. I, but I haven't said that. Was, I was at the beach when I said that. That was two months ago. I haven't brought him up since. But it seems like for whatever reason, Will Levis' name gets brought up on the show. I have. I brought up, up Will Rogers' name just to, just to be. Fair. I'm just saying. If we're recounting the. Well, you also said Kentucky is the one team that's going to cover on Georgia. So I yeah. think that's pretty. It's pretty telling there, Paul. Yeah. About Will Levis and, and your emotional feelings for him. Wallace Smith says Oregon's going to have some growing pains in their first year under landing. Of course. Yeah, Wallace. Uh, but in terms of their defense, uh, who was it? Let's see. Go Dogs, who gave us the $1.99 super chat for Chop Avius, says uh, neither guy, Sewell, Sewell or Flo, can cover in space, which is why I think you can abuse them with our tight ends and running backs. I don't know. I, I think they're I think they're pretty damn good. That's just my opinion. Everybody has one. Uh, but, there'll be growing pains for landing, but I'm telling you that like Sewell is a talent that like it's going to be hard for him to attract on a regular basis. Like he walked into Oregon and may have one of the better players that he'll ever have at Oregon. Is that a whole team? He, no, hey, but got, I'm saying Sewell's one of the best players in the country. Yeah, uh, he got a five star quarterback to commit to him, Dante Moore. I don't think it'll be as much growing pains as people think for him at Oregon. Outside of Utah and Georgia, they're more talented and a better complete roster than every other team on their schedule. Like realistically going 10 and two is possible if they win the games they're supposed to. And it, this could be one of those games where, what is Oregon? They're ranked 11th right now in the AP yeah. poll. I could see them finishing the season 15, 16. So you keep a quality win for Georgia when it comes down to, if you have one loss, you know, heaven forbid you have one loss, you're Georgia, you need some quality wins. Maybe this is the year where four or five teams uh, come heavy and they're, you know, they're, they're 11 and one, 12 and 0, something like that. Yeah. And you need a quality win. This could be one of those that keeps you in it. Maybe seems well, unlikely right. that that's going to end up happening. Only because like I Ohio State that, yeah. and Notre Dame to start the season, that's a loss for somebody. And do you yeah. think the other is going to escape the rest of the way? Like typically, Notre Dame's a fly in that ointment. Yeah, but that that scenario only works if Georgia Georgia's one loss is in the SEC championship. Because like if Georgia's a one loss team and wins the SEC championship, it doesn't matter what their schedule was like. But see, I, I think if they get to the SEC, yeah, I see what you're saying. You're saying that one loss and then are you saying lose again in the SEC or are you saying? No, 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 no. Like if, the they're in, if the one loss came in the SEC championship, then. Oh, um, I still think more than likely. I mean, it would take four undefeated teams. I think in yeah. that scenario, Georgia undefeated going to Atlanta. I think they're yeah, in. Exactly. it's all about. Even season. then, even then, I think they're probably still in. Yeah. Scott Anderson says, don't forget Kirby's undefeated against former assistants. Keep the train going. He has a shot at it, Ben. He has a shot at it. I mean, we're again. looking at Beamer. So wait, who is he? He's beating Beamer and Pittman? Yeah. Anyone well, else? He's 3-0. Three, three well, he hasn't played Mel Tucker. He hasn't so played he's Tucker. 3-0. Yeah, that'd be it. Two on Arkansas and one on South Carolina. So it's not much of a sample size, but those teams should we're talking about. Ju- we're talking about just head coaches, right? Because like Cheney yeah. and yeah. yeah, no, yeah, you can't mm-hmm. count. What is what is old Jim Cheney? That's a name. Probably a Whataburger or something. I see the Jeremy. But did y'all? 
Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry Did y'all that. see that uh, uh, Jeremy Pruitt was in a uh, World Series of Poker uh, game in Cherokee, North Carolina, like this really? weekend, I think it was. Yeah. He, well, he got like 23rd place. Like, he did pretty well. Holy he cow. Doubled, he not, doubled his money. Yeah. You're not going to believe this, guys. James Allen Chaney, the man, Jim Chaney, born January 12th of the year 1962 is an American football coach and former player who is an offensive analyst for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. No. Wikipedia doesn't lie. When did, did, that we know that, did we know that uh, Chris Winkie is calling plays at Georgia Tech? Because that, like, obviously I'm in the – like, I know nothing about Georgia Tech anymore. Chris Winkie is their quarterback's coach at Georgia Tech. Really? Chris Winkie yeah. was down at IMG for a little while. Hold on. Hold on. Jim Chaney is working for Georgia Tech. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow! I missed that. I missed that. Oh, for Jason's favorite, whoa, whoa, whoa. we we got to take out Mike Leach, his favorite head coach, Mr. Waffle House, <laughs> Eoff Collins or Jeff Collins. Is is it Jeff? Yeah, Jeff Collins. Yeah. Why do people spell their like his name spelled with like a G? Like there's no G in Jeff. Like, yeah, like like that, like, that, like that Jeffrey. That stuff kind of frustrates me. I don't know why. Like the Toys R Us, like the Toys R Us giraffe. It, that, yeah. he, he was he spelled his name. Maybe that's who he was named after. Travars Tillman is also coaching at Georgia Tech as defensive backs coach, and he was with Georgia and then went to Colorado with Mel Tucker and Michigan State, but he's back at Georgia now. I'm just learning every – Ken, Kenyatta Watson hanging out with Georgia Tech. You knew that. Yeah, ball. I saw that. Does that wow, program Jim. have any hope? Like, any hope? I mean, not not like, get either. out the gutter. Like, there are some programs – like Tennessee, for as bad as they were for years, you know, okay, they have financial backing, they have enough in-state talent, um, they can attract the coach, they their athletic department's been still comparable. Like you knew Tennessee could bounce back. With Georgia Tech, I don't see any hope in that program. You like, know the other no- thing about yeah, you know, the other thing about Georgia Tech is that like where Georgia Tech is now, especially financially, facilities, all that stuff, where they can be, there's obvious there's an obvious ceiling that Georgia Georgia Tech to become a contender, it's a stepping stone job now. So if they fire Jeff Collins, bring some money in, they rehabilitate the program, get the bowl games, they're competitive, they're leaving. That, that's just that's where Georgia Tech is now. But I don't I think, see Georgia think, Tech as a lasting uh, place for, for a good head coach. I think Georgia Tech fans would be fine with that if they could be a stepping stone program at this point. No. At this point? No. Right? How, 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 could you, how could you ever be okay with that, though? I think they just want improvement, honestly. I mean, sure, in the the near future. But, but, but just, just think, I mean, like this, they will never have the head. It it would have to take like a a miracle or like a, uh, an alum who is just like, I love Georgia Tech. I want to coach and be here the rest of my life, which that's impossible. That's just laughing. That's laughable to say out loud. The situation is even more dire, though, because. It's not even about there's no hope for them winning. I don't know that there's any hope for them persisting in the top tier of college football as this realignment stuff heads into two super leagues. Georgia Tech is it about to be left out in the cold and not even eligible to compete at the highest level? Like yeah. they, they will literally yeah, be yeah, dropping the power down. Five schools, yeah, yeah. If the power five schools, the big time power five schools, they broke off, did their own league, left the NCAA behind. Georgia Tech's not coming. It's that's sad. That's sad because this it's fine. <laughs> this oh. used, you, you seem it's fine. You seem very upset about Georgia Tech's downfall. I think because you used to have a buddy, I believe that you said you would troll, and now you you missed that because you're like it doesn't have the impact. It does. They're, they're just yellow jackets, you know. It doesn't. You know, it, it's not because back in the day when they won the Orange Bowl, you know, they were that was back in my uh, high school years, or college, freshman in college, something like that. When was that, Jason? Like two thousand eight, something like that. I just remember when they won that game, uh, I was sick as a dog, like with the, the, the worst cold or flu or whatever it was, and um, I could barely watch it. And I just remember being shocked that Georgia Tech won that game. But um, so, 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 it, it, it would have been 2010, I think. Yeah, so I would have been a freshman in college. Yeah. Ever since then, we watched that game together, and now it's nothing, man. Well, well, it, might been, it might have been 11, actually. It might have been 11. Actually, it's kind of good that Dane's on because Dane brought up this conversation. I think it was two months ago. Who's the biggest rival for Georgia? And I think because you were talking with college students that like they thought Alabama because it's very modern. Yeah. And I was talking to 
someone who's followed Georgia football for like 20 some years, not like 50, like Roddy, but uh, they said Florida is the biggest rival. Auburn is the best win, but Georgia Tech is the worst loss. Like, if you lose to Georgia Tech, it's the biggest embarrassment, and it's just the worst. So that's that's why I think that's own credit. And said that's why they're such a good rival because when you lose to them, and that's like the worst thing. Um, I still think it matters, but man, that, that that just whole institute, I guess it is, just a joke when it well, comes I mean, to athletics at this point. <laughs> people can feel how they want to about it, but like as the media dollars come in and that's an eyeball attraction business like Georgia and Georgia tech is that's kind of been buried at noon. I mean, it's been on ABC, whatever, but like that game's going to continue to draw fewer and fewer eyeballs for less amount of time because it's just not competitive. And so media is eventually going to dictate that Georgia and Georgia tech not play every year. And then Georgia plays someone more competitive in that time slot where it's already the holiday weekend and people want something to watch like Clemson. It, no, you may say I'm absurd. Why would Georgia Florida not be the last game of the season? I agree. Would the SEC ever want to create what they what Ohio State and Michigan have? Who? Yeah, because and, right I, now, right now you don't have that. I mean, yeah. they've already slightly done this, right? Where Tennessee moved back on the schedule in part because you want the SEC East to be competitive for as long as possible. So, like, those games later in the season have as much implication as they're, as can be. What you increase that even more is if two out of the last three weeks, Georgia's playing Tennessee and Florida, although that's in the current, like, East structure, which is probably going away anyway. So that's a lot of words to say who the heck knows other than Georgia and Georgia Tech does not have the cachet that it did even 10 years ago. Yeah. I, uh, I agree with all those statements. Great statements, Dane. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that, Paul. You're welcome. Main but Paul, you brought up Clemson, by the way. With the new SEC schedule, would you really want to play Clemson every year? At this at this point, no. Yeah. If you would ask me this question prior to the expansion and probably the new schedules, I would say yes. Now, why would you? You're, You're saying as Georgia fans, though, I'm telling you what media partners and Greg Sankey and Josh yeah. Brooks may want from a money standpoint. Oh, I agree and with that's that. That's what matters. If yeah. I was Brooks saying, doesn't want Clemson every they have, Josh, Josh Brooks doesn't want Clemson every year, I can tell you that. Josh Brooks wants to fulfill whatever contract brings in the most money. And obviously the big 10 is showing that that's in the billions now. Yeah. But to play Clemson every year, uh, I, I, I thought that I, I, I agree I from the money standpoint, so. you would want that, but at the same time, from a scheduling standpoint, that's going to make your schedule like the hardest in the sec. If the new schedule. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's the hard part about it where I do think some people would be like, Ooh, yeah, the only way that year. happens is if Clemson is in the SEC, which I, yeah. is a possibility. Now, now, yeah, you, you, if that were to happen, yes, I think that that's a natural. That's a natural in conference game every year. Could be a matter of time. Curtis Maximus just now joining us. That is a weird picture, you guys. That Nicholas Cage is a pickle. Um, <laughs> I love it. Are we thinking what about <laughs> Oregon? Look like uh, Mac, who's Kenny Macintosh, <laughs> Dejon Edwards. And Branson Robinson, or am I way off? Right now, Curtis, uh, that's who you've got healthy. So that'd be right now, but Kendall Milton should be fine. We say that I don't want to go down that road, Dane. I really don't. We've said this the past two years, though, about Kendall Milton. I'm in, I am full on Kendall Milton's gonna have to show me on the field for me to believe right now. That's just the injuries, one touchdown in his career so far. I, too but much I'm just hype. saying for, from the information standpoint that we have, we just yeah. say right now he's got some camp nagging injuries, and so they're being careful with him so he's ready. Until like you tell me year. that he has a knee sprain or an ankle turn or something that would like make it where he can't play the game, I'm going to say he's available because that's the information we have to work with. Curtis is right here talking about your uh, worst loss, Ben. Mark Rick just about got let go because of Georgia Tech. He's right. Um, and he said, excuse me, it's Pickleless Cage. Mm. Mm. That's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Good. That's 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 pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. That's Are y'all like Nicolas Cage movie guys? Not at all. No, I'm not a movie guy at all. I'm not a movie guy at all. I'm not either, Paul. Wow, we have a lot in common. I I'm in agreement. I'm not I'm a big J- Jason's a big movie guy. I can not see really. it. Oh um, damn. damn. I'm not, if I watch great. a movie, it, like, I, have two, I, remember, I have two friends. I have two friends that always give me a hard time because I've never seen anything that they've seen. And they, wow, this is the not movie yeah. show. Me too. 
Me too. I, I watch documentaries. I like. I only want to watch nonfiction. I don't want to watch fictional. Stuff. I did. I, yeah, I watched the Monte uh, Manti Teo documentary. Um, it was so good. Was I haven't good. seen it. So no spoilers. Good. No spoilers. Does he find his girlfriend? No spoilers. It's one of the best sports documentaries. Just, just I've seen. stop that, Paul. Just stop. Stop. That's so mean, Paul. That guy went through a lot. Well, I think he's married now. He he's okay him. now. Yeah, but dude, that, I, I don't think we really a society like we we we, 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 kind, we did him wrong, man. We we all we did. did him wrong. I'm I'm sure I made jokes too and on Twitter. And here's, all that. So, yeah. listen, here's I understand that people made jokes, but at the same time, even like if he got doxxed by this girl, whatever, got screwed over because he thought this woman was real. She ruined him, not him. And I know people still. I wouldn't date someone online that you never met, but still, like, you didn't deserve that. No. Well, I but, think the, the thing is, it's like, okay, yeah, the person who did it was um, was awful, and that person gets a lot of uh, air, uh, FaceTime. And, oh, do, and, they, do, they, do they say who it is? They show yeah, who it is. Yeah, they, 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 that person gets a lot of time. And yeah. uh, It's pretty much them two talking the entire documentary. Well, I need to watch like, there's other contexts, but that's pretty much it, which is why I thought it was so well yeah. done. Because their it voices girl, are really heard. Was it at least a girl yeah. like that age? Oh, you'll have to watch. We're not, yeah. um, we're not there, there, enough for you. There's a lot of elements to it. Yeah. Also, yeah. What, what yeah. I will say, Ben, is that like I thought it did a good job setting up how this particular circumstance could be something that like Manti found comfort in. And like mm-hmm. he's the Samoan guy. He's from Hawaii. He is now all of a sudden thrust into college football lore in South Bend, Indiana. And then on his social media, someone that he perceives to also be Samoan adds him and begins talking with him like that he was seeking that and he couldn't find it where he was in Indiana. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like there was some homie to it. I thought the documentary did a good job of explaining the atmosphere and the environment where that can begin to take place. Obviously we all know it goes a little overboard, but I thought that was important context that I didn't know at the time. And like you said, Jason, like people jumped on it and that was early in the meme and Twitter culture. And I'd like to think that we're a little more understanding of people now, but maybe not. Probably, probably not, honestly. I mean, I said a ter- I said a terrible joke about him, uh, and I haven't even watched the documentary. I just said it right now. Uh, back to Georgia, though. Tate Ratledge, Tate Ratledge, everybody. He was out there at the scrimmage. That's a big one. That's a big one, folks. Because if you didn't have Tate, that offensive line is going to move around. It's going to shuffle a little bit, shuffle and bustle. You want a bold prediction, Paul? If Tate's playing, he's the best offensive lineman on the team this year. That's I'll say a terrible that. bold prediction. That it, I'm yeah. going with that. You're going to pick that. His I know Roger Jones <laughs> exists. I know McClendon and Cedric Van Pran. They exist. Devin Willock is is uh, Coach Don and loves his Devin Willock. I know. And Marius Mims is out there, but Tate Ratledge is that guy, Paul. To quote you, he really because the previous fall or no 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 spring, previous spring camp b- before his injury, they said he was the best offensive lineman in spring camp. If he translates that now, he's going to be that guy. He could play guard. He could play tackle. He'll be the best alignment on Georgia this year. I'll, I'll go with that. Mm. Paul, you look like you're about to have an aneurysm. I think I did. Um, <laughs> what about what about Warren McClendon, who's been starting at right tackle for damn near 75 years? What about Roger Jones? I don't even want to hash this out. It's such an absurd take. And what this is coming from someone Pran? that like lives in absurd take world. <sighs> what about Cedric Van Pran? I mean, the guy's probably one of the best centers in college football. We're talking about a guy that's coming off of a Liz Frank injury, and he's going to be the best guy on the team? On the offensive line. Oh, not on the team. I never said the team. Hold on. On the hold offensive on. line. I mean, it's not what we take in context. Offensive line. I think Tate Ratledge will prove everybody that he's that guy. Mm-hmm. In what context? Like pancakes, overall PFS? Consistent. What, like, what information? Jamar Sawyer was deadly consistent. What and information do you have to be... say that he he's consistent in play? The, the seven snaps he played last year? or No, the it's not based he's on missing what, this like, he's played seven snaps and just those seven snaps. No, I'm just saying overall talent. I truly believe he is the most talented O-lineman on Georgia's roster, not named at Marius Mims, and he's going to be able to, to show that. I'm not hearing a basis for anything other than I think this. Ben, you, you also you also just said that the, the next best is Amarius Mims. He's not even starting this year. In terms of talent, I'm not saying he's the best, but in terms of talent, he's got all-world talent. 
So, so talent and performance are going to be different things. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. So, so, so you're telling me that okay, okay, Marius on, Mounds is more on, talented on, hold on, hold on. than Warren McClendon, but because but he can't get that spot. And player thing, if you paired Trayvon Walker and Aiden Hutchinson, you'd say Trayvon Walker's more talented, but Aiden Hutchinson's a better football player going to last year's draft. No, I think I a lot of people would say it because of his ceiling. No, I said Trayvon Walker is a better player because he can do more things. Oh, that you truly believe that because as a pass rusher, Aiden Hutchinson had like 16 sacks. I 100% I mean, believe that. Yeah. I see, I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. Can, continue your That's continue what I'm talking your, about with like talent. And like when we look at Branson Robinson, we say this is an all world talent. Yes. Even though we say Kenny McIntosh, these guys have shown it on the field, they're experienced. You know, they're going to be that running back. But this guy's got a lot of talent in him. He's got the speed, he's got all the athleticism. He's a really talented player. But, you know, let's say he's inexperienced or the head's not screwed on quite tight yet i guess you could say that's what i'm trying to talk about there but i think tate ratledge will have the combination of talent mixed with once you see him over time he's going to be the most reliable offensive lineman because last last year before last season in spring and fall camp there was a lot of reports out saying he was the best offensive lineman in spring and fall camp in high school when i saw him play he dominated at tackle and guard you don't see a lot of guys who are like six 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 seven who can move like he can and can be that versatile. That's why I think he's going to be the most meaningful O-lineman this year because I think at tackle and center – well, actually, I think the most irreplaceable is Van Pran because I don't know who else plays center. Dane's brother, Warren Erickson, is I, – I don't I, I don't think we're going to go down that road. He got benched in the title game. So Van Pran's most irreplaceable, but I think Tate Rattler by the end of the year will show that he is the best offensive lineman. I just believe in him. I just do. There's a paper being held up on the screen right now for audio only listeners. Okay. And and Paul has written down. Do you Paul have the date on there as, as well, Paul? Yeah, yeah we need yeah. a date. Yeah. yeah you Paul, need to well, date what happened that. last year with my bowl predictions? I think you checked them all off that I got them all right. So I, I'm, I'm going to take that to the bank. Uh, Tate Ratledge will be UGA's best offensive lineman, Ben Choppy. I'm going to save that one, guys, with the rest of the save pile because that's a hot take. How, how do we how do we quantify it? Is it going yeah, how do we measure? Is it going to be PFF? Uh, yeah, we're going to PFF we're gonna have to. Yeah, we're going to have to measure them off PFF grade. That's the only way. That's the only way we can do it. Or, or do we do we get somebody like Coach Donovan involved who can who's well, really good could. at evaluating this? Yeah, we could. Now we have I mean, to look yeah. at the after the year. We have to look at the whole year, though. We can't just get you got it. this guy. You here. got it, baby boy. You got it. You got the whole year. You got SEC championship game. You got national title game. You got it all. You got it okay. all. I don't. I don't know if I believe in it. But hey, you were right. Well, last who do you year? think? You think Van Prant's going to be the best offensive lineman? I mean, I, I think I because I know you guys have yelled at me for this, but yet you won't say who the O lineman is for you guys. Warren no, McClendon. Warren, Warren McClendon, Roger Jones, Cedric Van Pran, I think all three of them probably will have better grade, like graded out better than Tate will. I think Tate's the fourth best lineman on the team. I think Tate will get better as the year goes, and I, I think he's too. going to be I a really too. good player. But I'm saying there's I there's nothing too. in what we've seen so far because of his injuries to think that Tate's like ready for that. Like it wasn't guaranteed that he was going to have the starting spot, even if he's fully healthy, and he's already not fully healthy. And so, like, I don't even know how much we're going to see of him. But, but I will give Ben this: Tate Ratledge, from what we've heard, from what we've heard, can be a really good guard for Georgia, even though he was recruited kind of as a tackle and then had to transfer into guard because Roger Jones was the. Main left tackle, but we won't we won't go into that, right, Ben? We'll just keep that how it is, right? So Zach Martin and all these offensive linemen over the year that were all world tackles in college moved to guard and are legendary guards. Jamari Sawyer is left tackle. Now he's playing guard. You see guys move guard to tackle all the time. Yeah. Georgia saying. moved their left tackle last year to left guard, then put in Broderick. Jones. It's just it's just how they want to get the best five offensive linemen out there. And I think Tate is easier to transition to guard because I don't think he's as athletic as Broderick. Broderick's a really thin dude. He's got great footwork. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that, but I think Tate's a more natural guard compared to Broderick and they're both tackles. So I think that's why they did that. Just my opinion. The most important offensive lineman on the team is Broderick Jones. And it's because of lack of depth behind him because the entire structure of the offensive line changes. If for some reason, Broderick Jones cannot play. 
Yeah, if Broderick goes out, I don't know what happens there. You would hope that maybe you can... I can tell you what's likely to happen because I, I know what they've been working on. And it's likely that uh, McClendon goes over to left and Mims comes yeah. up to right. That's, That's most likely what happens. But even in backup, Ernest Green has gotten some look there if he's healthy, but he's been banged up. Um, and I even asked Don, uh, Coach Donna this on our last UGA Sports Live podcast. I thought it was odd that Austin Blasky, who had been – you know second or third team center he's been now taking left tackle reps and i don't that that's even more rare than the tackle guard movement of seeing center tackle um but maybe he's just that plug and play guy uh but you know austin has has gotten a lot of reps at left tackle to where if this if 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 crap really hits the fan right that like maybe he's a guy you look at swiss army knife type of guy yeah much that that shows they have uh they are concerned about depth of left tackle when you take your center and start giving him reps to left tackle uh, they 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 got to hope that Broderick Jones uh, stays upright the whole year I mean, they just don't have any experience behind Broderick they have no experience of anyone that's played left tackle I guess yeah. maybe in some practice reps Xavier Truss but like I haven't seen anything about Truss that says he's a tackle you yeah. can rely on yeah minus Warren Erickson what backups played like none of them Really, none of them. But left tackle's most second most important. Trust, position trust has played some. Yeah, trust has played a good bit. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about trust. But I don't think that trust is a starter unless it's a lot of injuries in front of him. Like I, I do think that at guard they probably would have preferred Willock and Ratledge, but we have to see how things shake out now. Which is crazy to me that Willock and what's really wild is. Coach Donnan called that from like the moment Willick stepped on campus and nobody else really even had eyes on him. And he was like, yeah, this kid's going to be a road grader. He's going to be a guard for Georgia sooner than later. And everybody was like, all right, coach. Yeah. You know, we'll look at it, you know, when we get there and sure enough, here he is uh, stepping over a lot of guys. Micah Morris is one of those guys that I thought was going to start Fairchild with his wrestling background. I thought he was going to get a chance. And Devin Willick is the guy shining. Uh, Jared Greg, Wilson is the wild card in this too. He's gotten a lot of reps in the last who, week and a half. Another Michael guy Morris, you, you look Michael at Morris is damn good. That's what I'm saying. But he's not. He's, he's not potential. Getting, he's not getting the looks. Yeah, he's, he's not, not getting, getting the, the reps right now. He's not getting the looks, my boy. I'm curious to see if he ends up as a guard or a tackle, Michael Morris. He can he can play both. I'm just curious with that. If too. he can play both, and they need to have him at tackle because that's the need right now. Because especially like if if you're projecting ahead. If it's already thin now at tackle and then Broderick Jones goes pro and Warren McClendon goes pro, here you yeah. go next year. Yeah. Uh, Greg, I've had this question up for a while. He said, what about the murmurings B-Rob, Branson Robinson, is stiff and more workout worry than on-field stud? I will say I interviewed Branson uh, at the Rivals Camp Atlanta uh, before he committed to Georgia. And one thing he said was he had to stop lifting so heavy uh, because his coaches – were afraid that, you know, he was going to basically like, forgot what he said. I could try to find it in an interview, like outlift to where he's more of a power lifter than he is a running back, if that makes sense. So basically the, his coaches were like, look, if you lift any more, you're actually going to just turn into a power lifter and not a running back. And so he's had to tone down his lifts. Did he tone them down once he got to Georgia? I'm sure Georgia's strength and conditioning program uh, is a lot better than his high school's program. So they're doing everything that they can to uh, get them right. I haven't heard that, you know, he's a, a work more of a workout worry than on-field stud. If that's the case, um, he is 110% workout warrior. If he's 100% on-field stud, then you got a damn good running back. So uh, don't forget Chad Lindbergh, didn't he? Lindbergh's still there. Yeah. Who am I thinking of that transferred? You're thinking to of um, went to SMU. Yeah. Oh, Owen Condon. Thank you. Yeah. I kind of chipped them in together. Uh, they're chipping my shoulder. Guys, we How go many for- linemen have transferred from Georgia, which is something I noticed. Um, which is crazy considering the lack of consistency in a, in a like, coach there. Cade Mays transferred and he was a starter. And then you had Troy Johnson. I mean, he was there. For, I think he graduated from Georgia. He was there for like four or five years before he transferred to, I think it was like Tennessee State or some place. Like, oh, those are the linemen I could think of that transferred. What about old, what about old Clay Webb? He what, transferred what? to some school in Florida, I think. He's not on the roster, right? Yeah. Jacksonville yeah, State. One. Jacksonville Where State. Jacksonville State. They upset Florida State last year. They did. Huh. 
I wonder if he'll be starting over there. 6'3", 290, man, he was a mauler at Rivals Camps. That God was Roddy's almighty. guy. No, what do you yeah, think he happened? Was, Former five-star guy? Like, it's crazy. He didn't, didn't yeah, he, he, work he out there. He Dude. was like the top player from Alabama. Yeah, he was everybody's guy. He was unstoppable. Nobody that happens from time to time, though. Like, Nate McBride yeah. was supposed to be amazing, and he was a yeah. special teams guy. He was a contributor, but – He's working with NASCAR started. now. Nathan he McCoy. is. He's is a he really? dude. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Mm-hmm. Won a race uh, about a month ago. I forget yeah. which team. I'm not a big NASCAR fan anymore. I'm not either. That's more uh, Ben. Ben. Ben's a big NASCAR guy. He keeps me in the loop. No, I'm. I'm not. I don't know where you pulled that from, Paul. I do like cars, but not NASCAR. It's unfortunate. Guys, we're about out of time here. So before you leave, I know that we jumped around. Hopefully, we. Uh, Gave you some enjoyment on your Sunday night here in the wee hours before you go to bed. We were lear- uh, we learned where Jim Cheney went. So yeah, that was good. We learned Just right up the road. Yeah, Jim you Cheney. Think he, you think he'd come on? Uh, no Talk shot. Us? No, no shot. Uh, the Middle Georgia UGA dog pound says Nate McBride is Jack Man for Denny Hamlin. Appreciate that. There we go. Good we learned out. that Nate McBride is the Jack Man for Denny Hamlin. That's a terrible name for that, by the way. I know that it's for like the tire jacks, but I don't, I'm just saying it's a that's a really they maybe could make it better. <laughs> <laughs> better. They could make that a better name than what that is. But, um, but <laughs> any, anyways, um, so we have Jack Man, Nate McBride, and Pickles oh Cage. So that's a Pickles Cage. Yeah, we learned about that. We learned about Jim show. Cheney is at Georgia Tech. We have uh, Georgia Tech has a Heisman winner on staff, right? Chris Winkie. We Chris learned Winkie. that. Yep. Uh, ben did a, a bold predict- prediction that Tate Ratledge will be the best offensive lineman. On I also YouTube. found that, I mean, Dane's not the only one with a brother on the team. Cash Jones is, is like my younger brother. So he does that's, look that's like nice. you. I, I, Jason and Paul, maybe you guys are hiding somebody. There mm-hmm. might be. Who knows? There might be a tall, skinny, lanky guy. He might be a punter, maybe, if you're looking for one like me. Maybe looking the punter. a long snapper. Yeah, I could be a long snapper. Yeah. Uh, but we learned all about that. We learned, uh, like Fred said, we learned about Manti Teo's uh, catfishing experience. I although... can't recommend that documentary enough. I mean, it's like two hours on Netflix. Yeah, you should it's watch really, it. Really good. Yeah, I will. Yeah. You guys didn't give away who it was, though. That, but I, I have to watch Big Brother. So that takes up a lot of time. Yeah, you, <laughs> you're, but oh, but Paul's big reality TV guy. Check him out on E. Check yeah. it out over there. I still watch Survivor. Is that weird? I love Survivor. I, love like, Survivor. I want to go on it. Survivor's better than Big Brother. I've applied I, I for can, it twice. I can, I can so, dig Dean. Paul, Paul, Big Big Brother's going downhill. If I'm ever gone for three months, that means Survivor call. Next year, I'm applying for Big Brother. I'm just gonna <laughs> send them one of, next year, I'm just going to apply for Big Brother and send him one of these tapes and then immediately get rejected. They'll be like, holy cow, you are terrible. We cannot put you on uh any type of platform especially cbs no the uh, only thing i watch is yellowstone i do i do dig yellowstone it is is a great show and the orioles apparently oh and the, and orioles. the orioles yeah you they're on right orioles. now they're winning so ah they are on is uh, adley rushman that guy is who adley rushman is that guy okay 100 yeah. is the best catcher in baseball wow like they win? That's they win not a hot take. that is not a hot take huh? did they win today they're winning 2-1. They're winning right now. They're playing. Oh, they're the night game. That's I, right. I don't know what inning they're in, but they're winning 2-1. Uh, on my I don't like it. They're on ESPN. I think you – I know you don't have cable or something. Yeah, yeah. They're the, I, I can watch yeah. them. I, they're the night game. I can watch them. Mm-hmm. You know what's getting bad in baseball when the Baltimore Orioles are the Sunday night baseball game. That's that's 2022 for you, folks. And to wrap up – They're this the show, wild card hunt. Boy, that's what I'm saying. This is – Year of the crash. Fun fact, Paul, you used to crap on me. 2012 to 2016, most wins in the MLB. 2017 to 2021, at least, I mean, most losses in the MLB. So interesting four year split. I'm just letting you know, it's fun fact. So I'm who's the Baltimore Orioles of the SEC? Ooh. Kentucky? Somebody who starts bad and then tears it up and is in contention. But then it's going to let oh, you down. Oh, Tennessee. So Tennessee. Let you, they're going to Probably, let you down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tennis, Tennessee. Tennessee the, the colors fit, too, because Tennessee will have a good run. Yeah. And then be complete trash. And then they'll have a good run. Then they'll be complete trash. Like, that's kind of the Orioles. And they're both orange. I get it. Mm-hmm. No, that's a good That's a good comparison. 
Brett Womack says, base is not comparable. I don't want to be compared to the hillbillies and all those trash talkers down there. Don't want to be. I don't want to be associated with Tennessee. I got Utah week one, by the way. Yeah, we're we're gonna uh, to not Ooh, give away. Yeah, now. Utah. Yeah, to not. To, to I'll not go ahead give and give it away. away. Are we gonna listen, pick week one games next listen, week? God, can I talk? Lord have mercy. Is this thing on? <laughs> oh, you're not a good host. I have even said there was a time when Dane hosted this, and it was the best show we ever had because mm. you were not on. And it just flowed. Wow. Out. Now I'm in an awkward spot right here because I think Paul's doing a good job, but like I love compliments. So what do I do? <laughs> Look, next week, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of do a week one pick them. Uh, we'll go over the crazy games that are, are happening week zero. Week isn't there a game in Dublin? Isn't I think Shamrock Bowl? Yeah. Why do they there's... always put the terrible teams on week zero? Like yeah, it's it's, uh, a Dublin Georgia Nebraska, to, like two Nebraska people. Is the king of week zero. <laughs> here comes the Corn Huskers. Oh, guys, here we go. Here we go. Here's our week zero. So this is what we'll be talking about next week, guys. We will have college football back. Uh, it says Nevada at New Mexico State. Time to be determined. Who knows when they'll play. Austin P at Western Kentucky. That'll be a noon game if you guys are waiting on that. Nebraska versus Northwestern. Exactly. Uh, Dublin, Dublin, Ireland. That's going to be on Fox. At we got a conference game in, in Dublin? Yeah. Idaho State at UNLV. That's going to be a barn burner. 3.30 p.m. What uh, international UConn- city would you want Georgia to go play in? Is it Athens? That would be that's pretty pretty clever. Is would, clever. Would, would would Greek people want to watch college football though? Uh, Georgia yeah, no. people might want to go to Greece. Yeah, that's true. See, that's that's the thing. Georgia, if Georgia could play in Greenland, did you always did you guys know that Greenland is actually ice and Iceland is actually green? Did you know that? Oh, we we all went to school. Okay, I was just I wow. learned more in this. Show I learned that from Mighty Ducks. So that's a movie. Yeah, <laughs> right. Being honest okay. with you. So, I so uh, the stuff my last my last two years of college. So, so, so I learned more today. Georgia could go play in Greenland if they had a stadium that could mm-hmm. fill them, and, and Georgia fans would go to it right now. To Ooh, get Dubai back on, would be nice. Ooh. I mean, I would be more excited if Georgia was playing internationally than I am for them playing in Atlanta against Oregon. Like, I'm just not jazzed about that at all. Doesn't have a college feel to me. Okay, okay. I know we're about to end the show, but this Nebraska Northwestern game. How many actual fans from both of those schools will be there for the game? Northwestern might have fifteen hundred. Nebraska's a passionate fan base. They've been bad, and they fill out that stadium. Yeah. So I don't know. And that's all. Nebraska, that Nebraska fans will travel. I can't when imagine Northwestern fans see. travel. When you have a state with no pro sports teams and they have a college team with a big fan base, they they'll travel a decent bit. I'm not saying they're not going to be sold out, but I'm telling you, Nebraska will have a decent bit of fans there. Because how I, big I'm is that stadium? I'm looking it up right now. I'm going to yeah. predict that 10 percent of Nebraska fans that go to that game, this will be the first flight that they've ever taken, and they're really <gasps> nervous. It's probably oh, no, no. Wow, well, oh. just just stereotype a whole state. Why don't you? Yeah, I totally do. I said ten percent. Like that's not a whole lot. Like there's a lot of Nebraska fans that I'm sure that travel, but like, look, my, 10% of them, uh, my mom you. has never flown on an airplane, so like I'm speaking to my people here. Okay, you know that's probably here. top five or six like dense states. That's probably a fact. All right, so this, are there even airports in Nebraska? That's what we're yeah, striving to. I'm probably sure. a fact is exactly our standard. Sure, there's an airport in Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> is there an airport in Nebraska? Yeah, man. I actually don't know, one. but yeah, I'm one. one. There's for sure one. every every sport. So for the college Rhode Island, Island series, like Wyoming, I would take a bet that Wyoming. There's probably one in Omaha. I'm gonna look this yeah. up. No, Ben saying for the college world series that all these teams are having to fly into Kansas City and bus over. <laughs> If it did, would you be surprised? I it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a huge. Oh, there's a bunch of there's a Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln. Uh, let's see. There's oh, apparently there's a bunch? There's a I need ton. To check out the now class. look, but, they're all, they're all like have, small airports, but. right? Just because you have an airport doesn't mean it's accessible to people. Because like if you try to fly to Ben Epps in Athens, that's not going to go. Yeah, well. you're not getting there. No, I understand. I'm just trying to see. Uh, I'm trying just, to do it. Omaha, yeah, yeah, North Omaha, Omaha and Lincoln would be your two big ones. So yeah, you got two, Ben. And then you have yeah, you have airports in like every every state, Ben. They have one in Wyoming I, too. I doubt what Wyoming having airports. Yes, Wyoming has an airport. They have farm. It's just a farm. That's what that state is. It's a massive oh my farm. Gosh. Jackson it's Hole, a- Laramie. I mean Jackson Hole. What was that? Like I will be honest with you. I Do you not know. know the retirement culture around Jackson Hole? Like there's a lot of people that really love going there in, in their latter years, just a slower pace. I'm sure it's a beautiful country. Like 
you know. It's three times the size as Maryland and has like probably like a tenth the people. Yeah, but that's why they need an airport for those people. Like you can't just stop in like a neighboring state and then I mean just Georgia drive is, over for five hours. Georgia's, seven hours are larger. Georgia's the largest state in terms of landmass east of the Mississippi River. So a comment like that is also a bit of a shot at the state of Georgia. Which well, Georgia's a lot of people. I mean, Atlanta's like the seventh. Well, where is Atlanta? Seventh or eighth uh, in cities? I would venture to say that's accurate in, in the country. Like, Atlanta, like you know, Georgia has some big cities and has people. Wyoming, Georgia has a big city. Have you met anybody from Wyoming? Like, no, 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 we haven't. So, I, you know, I'm just gonna say Wyoming's a myth at this point. Look, <laughs> oh, you're, you're a Wyoming truther. Yeah, he's a Wyoming oh, truther. I, he doesn't, doesn't believe. Place. Doesn't exist. He doesn't believe it exists. Rhett Wilmack says, "Yet when Greenland was settled, they figured nobody would come if they knew it was all ice." Yep, you're right. You're right. Good marketing. That's a really uh, good job by them. And then we've got uh, you guys asked about the stadium for the Ireland game uh, yeah. for Northwestern Northwestern Nebraska. It's called Aviva Stadium. Looks beautiful, by the way. Um, it only holds fifty one thousand seven hundred. That's a good size for that game, then. You so, get about like thirty five thousand for Nebraska, and maybe a thousand locals. 35,000 coming from Nebraska who doesn't even have an airport is going to Ireland. So that would be, <laughs> that would be 3,500 taking their first flight. Paul, they yeah. had a losing record in the middle of the year, played Ohio state and the place was packed. Like that they suck and they will fill a stadium. I, I They've been that way. Them. They're like the Cleveland Browns of uh, college. Yeah, not in terms of, that, because that, the Cleveland Browns that, always that, sell that, out. They always show up. Like when I covered the uh, Browns Falcons game, the Browns were miserable that year. The Browns, then Nick Chubb went off on the Falcons. And, uh, but uh, that stadium was packed. They all were like, you could see it in their faces going into the game. They were like, our team's a joke, but we don't care. We're going to get drunk and root for our team. Yeah, that's Nebraska. They've been, they've been suffering for about two decades or two and a half decades now since their, their, the glory days ended and they're still coming. They're still torturing themselves and we'll, they'll do it again this year, this time in Dublin. Well, my new <laughs> policy that makes no sense is that I am against neutral site games in the States, but I am all for them internationally. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, I don't like that it counts as a home game for one of the teams. I just don't like that. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. What What day? Let's see. I'm looking up flights. You want to go? Yeah, if you're flying from Lincoln, Nebraska to Dublin. <laughs> I can't Thursday, believe we've been talking about this for this long. Thursday to Monday. It, it's an intriguing conversation. $1,500 <laughs> will get you there through United, then Air Canada, then operated by Air somebody else, Air Wisconsin. I didn't even know that was a One thing. way around. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe 35000 no. is probably a reach at this point. No, you yeah, talking about. You're maybe talking about ten to fifteen thousand Nebraska. Yeah, you got two stops in that, and it's sixteen <laughs> hours long. One way or round trip. Uh, round trip gets you there for fifteen twenty three. That's before. That's taxes. not a bad price. I'd wait, do that. Delaware. Wait, back in twenty fifteen, Frontier I, uh, Frontier Airlines stopped its flights to Delaware. Delaware does not have an airport. You cannot fly into. That Delaware. is actually That's accurate. A- so, boom, there's a state that does not yeah. have an airport. It's because I it's – Delaware – you know, eh, uh, I, I do know this because De- Delaware is so close to Philly and it's so close to that. It doesn't make any sense to own and operate an airport in a state that small. Whereas, so were, like, I think Providence, Rhode Island has an airport, which actually is great because I've never flown into Boston. If you're flying into Massachusetts or, like, an hour of that side of Boston – like going to Providence is way easier than, than uh, apparently than flying into Boston. Yeah. The more, you know, guys, and the more, you know, <sighs> I'm shutting this thing down guys. If you could please go ahead and hit that like button, smash that like button, mash that like button on this video. We would greatly appreciate it guys. I know you're sick of us talking about nonsense, but guys, guess what? Next week we've got college football and we're going to talk about week one. We're going to have so much fun. It's going to be great. We're going to talk about this Dublin game. Talk about fans that flew over there and now they're flying back the next day to get back to work out there in Nebraska. <laughs> I'm probably not going to be on your show next week because I'm not a regular on it. So I'll pick Florida over Utah since that was the question that spurred this. Oh, Florida over Utah. I love it. I love it. I love to see it's it. In Gainesville. I know you guys hate to see us go, but love to watch us leave. Go ahead and push that like button one time. 
But anyways, guys, we'll see you later. We'll see you next week. This is the UGA Sports Call-In Show. None of you guys called in this week, but guess what? You're going to call in next week and the week after. When we change it over to the post-game overreaction show, it's going to be amazing. Thank you to my co-host, Jason But Ben Chubby-Bachman, and special guest, Dane Young. Cheers to you all, and I'm Paul Meharry. Good night. <laughs>